What is up YouTube and welcome back to another Earthcats Volley of the video. We have an Irelia special for you. So if you're wondering what we're taking a look at right now, it's an Irelia Aatrox matchup. And there's one thing you have to understand that your first ability is everything you need to do on this champion and need to know about this champion. Understanding the intricacies of this champion is very simple. You see minion that's low HP, that is a potential target for you to use your first ability on. It's also an auto tech reset. Utilizing this can be a massive difference Make a Look at the space she's creating with a champion. The sidesteps are left and right and the enemy is forced to flash away and we have complete lane dominance through the very early stages of the game. Contrary to so many other top lane champions, Aurelia can just chill and wait for the minions to get low and then use her first ability to get all of that so fast. And look at the kill pickup here. Absolute domination. The auto attacks and the resets of the auto attacks as well as the speed you gain with your first ability on these minions is absolutely unparalleled and beyond crazy. And we see Viego in the fog of war and he immediately backs off and he will now go for a massive item spike which are going to be gluttonous grease. These boots on Aurelia are especially powerful and you're wondering why. So, Aurelia has two sources of damage, physical and magical, and they're pretty well mixed, to be honest. And with uh, Gluttonous Greaves, you gain Omnibamp, which means you heal off magical damage as well as physical damage alike, and therefore you'll have an easy time dominating people. Not only this, you'll also gain so much more damage with the amount of attack damage these boots grant you. And yeah, if you see the... Uh, purple or pink indicator on minions, you know that your first ability is gonna one-shot them. Or last hit them. Now we have level 5, they have the little baby Scarlet, but Aatrox really needs to be careful here. If he gets all in here with all of these spells, it's an immediate death angle. And that is something you really do not want to encounter when it comes to fighting Aurelia. So whenever Aatrox walks up, it's really, really dangerous for the guy because Aurelia might just go onto him and get the free kill, dashes on top of him, tries to go for the extension, gets the ult of Aatrox who's just running away because he can't fight back, it's too much damage with the fully stacked Aurelia passive. And again, we see the preparation here, looking for an angle onto the Aatrox, gets the angle with the first, it's an instant kill. It's just so much damage, like this champion's damage is obscene. I've rarely seen such an insane amount of damage from a champion that just completed boots. And yeah, we and Wild Earth have an absolute damage issue right now, but this is getting really out of hand. And Aurelia is not really a bad champion currently, she is actually quite good if you know how to play her. And there's only one thing you need to be really careful about. It's uh, not rushing Blade of the Rune King. Often, this will actually get you killed in a lot of scenarios because the enemy champion just does too much damage for you. And for the Aatrox example, the Aatrox would deal too much damage and you don't really need the Blade passive. You will be happier with the Trinity Force and the extra tankiness as well as the extra AD, as well as the honor effect. It will just do more for you. Look at these trades, look at the absolute, it is so unfair, a good played Aurelia is so toxic and it's so wonderful how you can see how he weaves in the attacks and just is completely aware of his damage potential and how much he can do to just completely dominate through the laning phase. Another secret uh, many Aurelia players can utilize is hiding their third ability in Fog of War and with that absolutely dominate a game because they can just hide it and therefore instantaneously get the free kill. Viego comes around the corner. Nice. Look at the healing though. Look at the healing. And now, okay, okay, fun time's over. You got absolutely denied. And we get a hard cut here immediately going back into the game. Viego is dying. The Herald goes over to the Darius and they are super low HP. Annie getting completely caught off guard here by the flash first ability. Aatrox tries to hunt down the Tristana, but Tristana is too fast and gets away. And there's a massive way for the Aurelia to collect as well. Peak domination. And if you want to, we can take a look at Aurelia jungle after this one as well, just to give you even more of an idea how crazy things can be on this champion. 
Because even though um, it's not necessarily a jungle champion anymore after their changes to a passive, you can still play her because she's a melee champion. And melee champions in Wild Rift can generally be played as junglers. Oh no, Aatrox, you walked back to lane. That is too unfortunate. Will he get... He even got the cannon XP, that's actually tragic. Because he didn't instantly die. <laughs> but look at how much damage he does to these minions. And he will let the entire... Okay, look what he's doing right now. He's letting the wave die to the tower. He doesn't want the Aatrox to gain any bit of gold. He wants to make sure the Aatrox loses every single bit of potential gold to make it even harder for the Aatrox to make a potential comeback. And if you take a look at the minimap, the enemy is now pushing for their first tower, so the Aurelia has to take this tower down so the enemy doesn't get the first tower, so he gets some extra gold back. And yeah, now he has a full reset, he has a full Trinity Force in his pocket. And some extra chum change. Looking at the enemy team composition, what is he gonna go for? Buys anti-healing against the Aatrox, making sure he doesn't heal for 50 billion. Buys the QSS, wants to actually move. And what is he? The Proto Belt? No shot, okay. That is a bit of a wild one, going for a Proto Belt. But yeah, he is gonna go fast. He is going to go so fast, it's insane. Also, his button layout is criminal. Ultimate is available. No flash for another 20 seconds. Vigo on the sideline. Age Aatrox also on the sideline. So yeah, he's gonna go there, collect another big wave of money here. And Viego's actually still here. He picked up the Scorpion, so Protobelt happens in front of him. Hits the CC, hits the ult. But Viego does so much damage. Like, Viego is such a crazy champion. The fact that this was even remotely close is just a joke. Oh no. Annie. Yeah. Try out playing the Annie. She just has the Tibbers card, so you can't move. You get knocked up and killed. Because, yeah, didn't W in time, or maybe the W wasn't available at that time, so. Instant death comes after. And you know what's also so weird to see? Somebody not having the gold notification enabled, so you don't see if you actually lasted these minions. Like, visually. Obviously, you will know when you get your first abilities reset, but still. For my brain, it just feels so bad to not see gold. We see a massive rotation here now. Aurelia looking for a flank. They didn't swap to Sweeper to get that flank. Enemy are also got bounties on the turrets here. So the question is, who's going to take the farm on the other side of the map in the future? Because somebody has to. There's so much gold that will go away and the enemy will have the potential to maybe even get a bounty. And that will be something you really do not want to see. Because it's the, it's the worst thing that happens through uh, every game in Wild Rift. It's just people not caring about side waves. And therefore losing so much gold and just playing ARAM. Like you see, the entire team is just running around for fun, and it's the same across every rank and every elo uh, and every region, maybe with the exception of high rank legendary Q in China, uh, but it's the same pretty much anywhere. Tristana dies on the bottom side of the map, and Aurelia is trapping for, I don't know, better days? Meanwhile, the enemy team is getting more and more gold by taking these bounties. Any she does just flash down there, so he has to make something happen very soon. Looks for an angle here, flashes in the ultimate, only gets one, so the flash ultimate was an absolute waste in the end. Viego is here as well. Ezreal with Icebone Gauntlet into a full AD comp. Very good pickup, though. Use the Proto Belt, gets close to the Aatrox, but nothing happens, and yeah. The dragon will get into the team's hands, so no soul for the enemy. But the question is, does it matter? We don't have ultimate available. Viego gets a... Ooh, he didn't get a reset, but we get completely popped. And that's one of the biggest issues with Aurelia. You are very squishy. Your champion 
especially with this build, like you have Trinity Falls, Wits End, Gelatinous Greaves, you do not have any HP outside of the 250 from Trinity Falls, and you don't really have anything in terms of armor. So you still just die super quickly. So he needs some more HP, he needs to get this Sarex Gauge, and he needs to get towards his Amaranth Twin Guard as well, because with Amaranth Twin Guard, as well as Sterex Gauge with all the other items he has, he becomes an actual tanky champion. And not only this, uh, thanks to Sterex Gauge being changed with the rune theme, well, you have another inbuilt cleanse for free. But I really don't know if I'm a fan of this uh, proto belt, because this is just too much of a flip, right? You'd be better off with anything else, no? Like, for example, the QSS to not get any CC'd. Uh, you can obviously always make the argument, yeah, but I can just use my second ability through it if I'm fast enough. But still, the ego goes in here very deep, though. This looks like a very messy fight. Ultimate connects, but nothing happened so far. We do not have an angle. He can't just go in. He would instantly die. Big wave on the bottom side of the map. They only lost one person. And Viego nearly dies as well. There's an enemy with a stun available. We need to be really, really careful. Somebody has to take care of all these waves everywhere. Aatrox splitting apart on the top side of the map. He can't really commit for anything, so she's forced to look for nothing. He can't really do anything. If he wants to find an angle where he can play from, he really needs to swap to Sweeper. And with that done, he then takes a look from an angle where the enemy doesn't have vision. And preferably with Flash. That way it becomes so much easier for him to play the game. Because the way as it is now, he has very messy, like he has big issues finding impact. And yeah, you see, he swaps to QSS. He could have saved himself so much money by actually buying QSS early because Protobel is just a funny gimmick, but it doesn't really do anything for him. Darius somehow gets on top of the Ezreal, which makes no sense, and he gets the free kill on the Ezreal. Viego in the jungle, looking for an angle here again. Viego just very interesting spot. QSS being used, ultimate being missed, very sloppy play here so far. Now the Aatrox is fighting the Lucian in melee range. Just what is going on? He has the Baron debuff, and the Baron debuff is now away. Okay, there's a massive wave on the top side of the map, which needs to be taken care of. Somebody has to do it. Because these waves are the reason why you lose so many of your games. You really do not want to lose to just waves because it's an absolute pain to lose to waves. It is so dumb to lose to just minions and you just need to be paying more attention to what is happening in the sideline. You really do not want to actually just lose to minions because so many times when you play Wild Rift, you see people just refuse to go sideline for whatever reason. They just sit mid lane and look at each other. Just don't waste so much time doing so. Look at the potential. And he is now going for a flippy play without Sweeper. If he had Sweeper, this play would have been perfect. Because he could have known or made sure that he wasn't on vision at all. And with that, he can maybe catch somebody off guard. He's backing, us, backing up his team right now, looking for an angle. He has flash and ult available, uh, but forcing somebody, like, something so deep in the enemy territory is a very risky play, and if it goes bad, you might just lose your entire lead. He goes in for a flash ultimate and gets a kill that was, was super close. And this is what I mean with, like, forcing these kind of things. It's super, super dangerous and super close, and he got so lucky that the Azure actually didn't hit this one. And that way we'll end this game, but we'll hop into the jungle game in a brief moment. Okay, now we're going to take a look at Irelia jungle, something that is a thing of the past, uh, very much forgotten in modern times, but here we're going to see some masterclass elite gaming that will probably surprise us in a sense of uh, that this champion is a lot better in jungle than we believe it is. It's surely not consistent, don't get me wrong, but it's definitely a fun pick that you need to have on your radar. So what's so far special about the build and everything else? In the first video, we already debated or talked about the uh, boots and why we go for these boots. We go for Conquer in the first video because we are laning top lane, but this one, this jungle build, actually goes for PTA, which is a lot of damage. 
Lee Sin goes for some cheesy bullshit on jungle. I don't even know what he's trying to do. You're playing against Varus Thrash and you go for this cheesy stuff. Are you are you okay in your head? You lose your flash here and you don't flash instantly so you will fresh. Why do you steal? Swiper, no swiping. What is happening? And he even lost his smile. What is happening in this absolute... What is this madness of a game? No, no, no. Start Gromp. Start Gromp if you start anything. Uh, okay, I guess we have to start Wolves now. What is happening? What is this Chinese early game madness that just doesn't make sense? Why is Elysian walking into the jungle when they have a fresh and a Varus lane? Against the Kaiser lane. You must be crazy in your head for doing so. Yeah, congrats. You lost your blue buff though. Like you gained a blue buff, Lee Sin, but your bot lane probably lost their entire family and their entire real estate. How is this po What is this creature doing here? Yes, my still available. Gets the last hit onto a Gromp, so the level up happens as well. Like, this Lee Sin is just griefing. This is what I mean. Like, people just invade for the sake of invading. Like, what is the point? You you see your lane? Your lane is Kaisa Jana. Why are you invading like crazy? They have fresh Varus. They can do whatever they want. I just don't understand. And we get a reset off and we have a fully completed gluttonous griefs. And we got only two camps because there was just so much shenanigans happening. What we have to praise though is the level-headedness level of the Aurelia to wait so long to use the Gromp as a dummy to not get hit by the Lee Sin Q. To then get the last hit onto the Gromp with the double stun on Lee Sin and the Gromp. To then level up to level 3. To then turn with the help of Fresh. That is a very level-headed play. The Lee Sin is just playing Lee Sin like every Lee Sin player I've ever seen in my lobby. That is always behind and never wins games because he's just coin flipping every single play on the entire map. Lee Sin is like, I don't want to win. I just want to have fun. He might have some fun, but he might also just die. Because now, Lee Sin, you're level 3 against level nearly 6 and you just die again. Congratulations, Lee Sin. You flipped for days and you got punished for flipping. And Talon, I hate to break it to you, you're also just dead. It is just crazy to me that they're continuously flipping and flipping and flipping rather than trying to go with the consistent route. It could be so much easier, but nope, he's like, I will just flip the game, I will enjoy my time. The thing I'm curious about, like, how do you permanently die as Jace into Mundo? Like, I know you might not get to kill him at a point anymore, but how are you constantly dying? Let me guess, he has, like, armor pen boots. It's like, yeah, I will just, uh, win, smile. Uh, the gank in a talent is always pain, it's so hard to actually pull off. All Lee Sin. Ah, yes, yes, Irelia champion. Sure, that is certainly a thing that should happen. Okay, yeah. Uh, we love Irelia on mobile devices, don't we? And somehow our Jace dies again. <laughs> I don't know how it's possible, but I guess it is just what it is. That actually ki- It actually kills. This guy is crazy, no? Like, he's actually so clean on this champion. He is so beyond clean, there's just no words. He is completely stomping the enemy on a micro level, on a macro level, and everything there is. There's just a, a complete abyss between this guy and the Lee Sin. And the Lee Sin, 
obviously has to settle for the lesser objective because he can't really contest the Herald against a 7 kill Aurelia. That's just not gonna work. Nice quick combo onto the Lisa. Lisa jumps away though. We still have ultimate available. Talon on the run, Jana on the run as well. And Talon gets hooked. And at some point just dies. Needs to play it slow here. The Kai's has a lot of damage. 276 with just one Q. Man, this Kaiser champion is just unreal nowadays. Like, I don't know. Like, this champion sucks so hard in lane, like, it can't do anything. And then it just suddenly becomes, like, a Thanos champion. Especially if you go for the plated steel caps variant that makes you even tankier. Now it's time to get the lovely kill onto Dr. Mundo. With 2,400 gold in our pocket. Casting Minimum Instantly died to our Q. We hit our third ability. And we do not, so we didn't get the proc of his passive. But this Mundo does so much damage, but we still get the free kill here. Another bit of gold in our pockets, and we have a fully completed. Do you really want to go for Wits End this game? Really? Why? Why would Zend? They have Janna, they have Kaisa. I don't really see the necessity of with Zend here. I mean it's DPS and helps against Kaisa too. I guess it's fine. But I thought you'd definitely be happier with Blade or Rune King. Into Den DD. But I really hope that Jay stops the inting now, because he needs to be really careful that he doesn't go for too much inting. Because if, if it reaches a certain point, it just becomes so unbearable that the Mundo just runs over them. Luckily though, they have so many weird scaling champions that are so unbelievably annoying to face, like Vladimir and Varys. That's still a very dangerous thing for the Mundo. Because for the extended E over the wall, over the edges, but yeah, the Mundo damage is kind of insane. Pops the ultimate, tries to run away, but the DPS off the Aurelia, look at all the numbers, it's just too much. This Aurelia champion with all the DPS is crazy. And to be fair, if you go below 50% HP and you get to consistently auto attack with Wit's End as a melee champion, you gain so much HP back. It's even crazy on champions like Shivana that have like multiple auto attacks in one attack, like if you use your auto attack with the first ability, you apply which sends so many times, you actually gain so much healing, it's insane. It's like a budget summoner heal you just get on a button press that isn't a summoner spell. DD ready in the bank, but we pillage the enemy jungle camps because the Lee Sin is a dirty flipper and dirty flippers have to be punished. Lee Sin needs to be careful. If, if Lee Sin comes, he might just get instantly stunned and killed if the Aurelia ult connects. Aurelia ult connects, nice W here to avoid damage, nicely dashing around to avoid certain death, gets all the resets, and the sustain is quite insane. He pre-places the third ability, just to make sure he can't get caught off guard, and the talent just has to settle for the wave. He can't just go there because it's too much of a risk. If the Aurelia still has W available, the Talon will not have enough damage to kill her. And then when the Talon is too close, especially jumping over a wall, he'll be just completely vulnerable. But now we have too much money. We need to leave. Leeson tries to probably look for an angle to flash kick. Kick flash. But we're just trading slow smites. Ammonic Echoes Yana is around the corner. We hit the stun. And the Lee Sin nearly dies instantly, Vladimir is also at the party, Fresh also here, another stun connects, the Jana is paying for the sins, she is committed. And uh, Kaiser is running away, but we have like 5000 gold in our hands, this is a little bit too much. But I really do not understand the style of jungling by the, um, by the Lee Sin. It, it, it feels so bad and inconsistent, it feels like... You would only climb through forti like fortitude, like you play 2,000 games like this and then you climb because, yeah, your stats are so bad that the system will eventually just end up pushing you. Because how is this supposed to be successful gameplay? It's just flip, flip, over flip and even more flip. 
Dragon secured, Lantern being taken, instant Q spell hits the mark and the ultimate as well, but they have to back off thanks to the Veil of the Janna. Nothing much will happen here, there's still the safety of the tower and we have to deal with the red buff. Lee Sin looks to probably get this one, but we secure it actually and the Lee Sin will fall. He's only 100 gold, he's worth, he's exactly like one melee minion and a caster minion in terms of gold. Ooh, they need to be careful, we are in the backline right now thanks to executing these minions, some real important mechanic that many people often forget. Um, when you see low HP minions, you really need to be careful when you play against Sorelia because she can just use these as a gap close. And once she's on top of you, look what she just does to you. You just immediately die, you see the sustain, the healing through Triumph and DD. It's just too insane. It is just so dumb how much HP you just regenerate if you have DD and Triumph. Because a third of your damage taken is being um, changed into a damage over time effect if it's physical damage. And then this damage over time effect if you get a kill is cleansed and you heal for a portion of your missing HP. So, you combine this with Triumph, which also heals you for a, por a portion of your missing HP. You have an insane amount of healing. And that way you just, if you get one kill in a fight, can literally heal you for more than half your HP, effectively. Very patient, he doesn't really go for it. Because it would have been too dangerous to go for it immediately. But yeah, the Kaiser. Look, look at the healing. Just look at like I, I will actually. Let, let's go back, okay? So you see, his Starks is procked, okay? And just look at how much he healed. It is just borderline insane, no? I just find it absolutely crazy how insane that is value wise. It's such an insane combo, like Triumph and Death Stance is such an underrated insane combo. Like, more people need to take a look at that one. And why are we losing Sightlane to Amundo? How are we dropping an inhibitor to Mundo just running down side? Where are you, team? What are you doing? This is exactly what I mean. And now when he left, his team just thinks it's a great idea to continue this absolute stupidity of a fight. And now the enemy might get barren and the game is actually losable. Because the understanding of the game is too low and people just don't want to pay attention to anything. But listen, you knew he was there because he threw a lantern there. So you could have assumed that he might be there. And therefore you don't recall on that spot. Even if it's just a bait, it could have been a possibility because the Aurelia can't solo Nasher, I believe at least. I remember when Aurelia used to be able to... Uh have a passive apply to monsters, that was insane. Yeah, Lee Sin. You are just dead on cooldown and you will also die. You will just be ran down, Talon comes around the corner. He spent so much time on that Mundo, he can't, he just can't kill him, he's too tanky. Now the Kaiser is close. Kaiser will turn around. Kaiser needs to be really careful. Nice blast going here. Gets the kill on that one. Heals for so much. And the Kaiser, if she gets stunned by anything, it's immediate death sentence. Hits the CC onto that one. Oh, the Kaiser will fall here because she got hit by a spell. Lantern comes forward and another chase on onto the giant. Really nicely played by the Fresh. And this will mark the end of this game. Absolute beautiful domination. That is just crazy. And we get another hunter. Look at the healing. You can't, nah, it's just too goddamn dumb. It's just too insane. And yeah, as per usual, thank you all for watching. If you enjoyed the video, leave a like and subscribe to the channel and see you soon for more Rift Guides content.